from a data lake zone standpoint, um, obviously, you know, the, the topology of your data lake is going to be very, you know, custom and specific for your organization. But Blue Granite actually recommends, you know, this kind of set of um, kind of data lake zones to kind of start out with. So from a, the, the first zone that we would recommend is actually kind of ingesting the data and actually landing it into a, uh, a landing zone within the data lake. This is going to be a more transient zone within the data lake. Um, this zone will actually end up getting kind of truncated and reloaded each time the ETL runs. From here, we recommend actually taking that um, unaltered data and actually bring it into a raw data zone. Within the raw data zone, we're actually going to keep snatch, snapshots of all the different data that we actually are bringing into the data lake. And again, this is going to be kind of unchanged, unaltered data. So we just kind of have tally and, and have a historical perspective of the data we're bringing to the data lake. From here, um, we might have different um, aggregations or maybe uh, there's reporting tables that we want to enable at the kind of raw transaction level directly into the data lake. And we might bring that data into a curated data zone. And so these, these will end up basically being reporting tables that we actually enable directly inside of the data lake. These reporting tables could stay in the data lake or over the course of time, we could come up with a new subject area model inside of the data warehouse and kind of bring that data from the curated zone into the data warehouse as well. Um, our next important zone within the data lake is gonna end up being the analytic sandbox. A lot of times data scientists need to bring in um, basically curated data or data from the raw zone, or maybe there's master data that they need to bring in from uh, different source systems. And then also there may be kind of uh, data they want to put inside of their user drop, like a user drop zone and kind of bring into the analytics sandbox um, that <clears throat> is basically either a, uh, a a third party data set or some type of ancillary data set that um, may be used for analytics that uh, isn't being used by the rest of the organization. Finally, we would recommend having some type of um, archive data zone. And so um, typically within your data warehouse, you may have some type of purge policy. Um, within that purge policy, you would, uh, um, you know, maybe you're keeping like six years of history directly inside of the data warehouse. When we, uh, instead of actually deleting that data from the data warehouse, what we would recommend is actually taking the historical data, loading it as it is into a, an archive kind of data zone within the data lake, and then actually using a, what's called an external table and polybase to enable uh, users to kind of query that, that, that archive data directly in the data lake, but through the relational database. So it provides a really strong capability. We, we, we have those, basically those data lake zones, but then within the data lake zones, how do we actually set up the data lake topology for organization to kind of be successful? So we want to organize the data in the data lake using kind of logical group groupings that are easy to navigate, search and secure. Other considerations might be, you know, who owns the data, what's the data retention policy, you know, how am I actually accessing the data? But, you know, as an example here, we can see, you know, effectively in my, my raw data zone, I may have a master data folder. And within my master data folder, I may have data that's, that's related to products. And then for that data related to products, maybe one of the source systems is SAP. And then with a table within SAP is BBAP. And then underneath that, I may have snapshots of the different versions of data I brought in into the data lake from BBAP. Um, and then finally, I've got my Parquet file that I can actually um, I can actually query and use within the data platform. Again, this is probably going to require some pre-planning. Uh, data lake zones are going to fall somewhere within this topology. Um, it could be in you know different levels. Um, you're typically going to want to put some type of subject area and source system names in into this topology as well, especially if you've got data coming from multiple different data sources. And then finally, we may have kind of purposely built folders or structures within our data lake that actually support more of like a hive uh, database type use case, use case like enabling partition. And so when we have that, there's kind of a specific naming convention we might use and plan for. From a security standpoint, um, we're able to actually secure the data lake uh, organizationally using Azure Active Directory credentials. And we can do this using uh, role-based access, access controls and access, and, and access control lists. So permissions can actually uh, be applied using Active Directory credentials to the data lake itself. So users can connect to the data lake using their AD credentials. Um, from an RBAC standpoint, the RBAC, the role-based access control is actually uh, applied to the entire storage um, at the kind of at the top level. And so here we might give somebody like uh, basically a, a data contributor right on top of the entire data lake, which would allow them to basically view and edit data direct and create new files 
and folders directly inside of the data lake, or maybe we want to give them reader writes um, only, so they can only kind of read data in the data lake and use it, but not necessarily write data back. The other way we can apply permissions directly to the data lake is actually through ACLs, and these are actually applied at individual folders and files. <clears throat> so I can actually um, create an ACL permission, either an access or a default permission, um, and I can apply, you know, basically rewrite and execute <clears throat> to a folder and to a folder and all its children and, and, fi and files at different layers within the data lake. And so this might be a mechanism where I, I use ACLs to give people access to certain types of data, but not access to others. <clears throat> 